a pleasure to give a talk about journal of Alzheimer's disease to this austere group of professional librarians, of medical libraries. And <clears throat> what I want to talk about is about that journal of Alzheimer's disease, Chad's role in the field and how it's been a community developer for new ideas. Before I talk about the journal, I want to talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease. Alice Alzheimer's described the disease over 100 years ago, but the modern era of Alzheimer's disease really began in the late 1970s and early 80s, when Alzheimer's disease was appreciated as a really common condition. Prior to then, it was thought only to be early onset dementia, when it was appreciated as being late onset dementia also, uh, which happened during the late 1970s. It was therefore known as an incredibly common condition. It's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Some estimates are that maybe the second cause of death in, in England. And further, it, there are over 6 million people suffer from Alzheimer's disease in the United States alone. So it's an incredibly common condition, has tremendous economic um, impact, maybe a trillion dollars per year worldwide and um, has a lot of social impact for families that are impacted by the disease. Importantly, with all of this interest and billions of dollars spent in the last few years, and right currently it's almost $3 billion per year, just the United States government is spending and drug companies are even spending greater amounts of money. Little progress has been made beyond the description of the disease with greater refinement biochemical levels, but there's no therapeutic to reverse the disease or even to slow the disease. There's just drugs that uh, provide benefit to patients and families, but still the course of the disease is the same. And this is where journal of Alzheimer's disease comes in. For over 20 years, we've really been the leader in advancing new ideas about the disease. Chad's mission may not be so different than other journals that are focused on diseases. It's an international multidisciplinary journal that's dedicated to providing an open forum for disease. But the way we go about providing the open forum, the way we interact with authors and uh, our numerous editors is really critical because we want to build the continuity of the past all the way from the beginning of Alzheimer's disease. We've been doing historical issues of uh, looking at what's been happening over the past hundred years, what's happening now, what is likely to be the future, and particularly focused on early diagnosis, preventative methods, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, Jad has been a leader in uh, lifestyle intervention to change the course of the disease with the goal of working to find a cure or at least a way to arrest the disease. And uh, by focusing on these things, we've really focused on how we could form a network to pr promote novel new ideas. How do, we, how do we do this? Well, Jan's editorial policy helps drive innovation to improve detection, prevention, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. So I'll show shortly, we do this by increased inclusivity and diversity by including early career researchers and doing things to promote developing countries, promote uh, publishing in Jan. We're the most highly cited journal devoted to Alzheimer's disease. And uh, like one of these really important uh, sections to promote new ideas in the disease who dealt with the ethics of Alzheimer's disease. We have a section particularly devoted to it and an editor to do that. So we use our editors in many different ways. Right now we have 726 board members. And this is done because everyone who publishes an article, the corresponding art author is invited to be a member of the editorial board, but 75% accept. But on staying on the editorial board, beyond the initial year of appointment requires doing an act of service. And these acts of service 
mean soliciting papers and handling the review or some authors will select from our editorial board to handle their article. And this gives multiple ways to submit an article. So the traditional path for most journals is what we call track two. Article submitted, goes to the editorial office, and then goes to the reviewers, and the editor-in-chief, myself, makes the decision. In track one, uh, our preferred path, articles are submitted to an associate editor, one of our editorial board members, and they select the reviewers. They make the preliminary decision, and most likely, 99% of the time, I would concur with their decision, and uh, that would be the final decision. The only departure from this is when I personally have a conflict of interest, primarily because I'm an author of one of the articles, or um, maybe it's associated with a company I'm working with, et cetera. Then another uh, one of our deputy editors would handle it, and I wouldn't see the decision at all. So we have, um, an editorial board and, and the same would be for articles published in the journal coming from North America, Europe, and Asia. We also have articles coming from South America and the Middle East. We put a lot of effort to increase our contributions from South America, where we have two regional editors. Those are different than associate editors because they don't have defined terms. And another one from the Middle East all to try to increase our numbers. Our numbers uh, for North America versus Europe are about equal. That's unusual for a North American-based journal because we put a lot of effort to have European involvement. In Asia, we also have a few um, regional editors, two in China, one in Japan, and have involvement from Korean authors because we know this is an expanding market the number two market in terms of funding research for Alzheimer's disease is China. So Chad has put a real effort to publish new and emerging ideas. What's important while we've done this, we haven't focused on the impact factor. It doesn't mean I'm not paying a lot of attention to what it is, but our primary goal is to be a place of innovation. So Chad has been one of the earliest places to publish the microbiome, which is the idea that bacteria in your, in your digestive tract play an important role in disease, or the idea that diabetes is important in Alzheimer's disease, the coining of the term type 3 diabetes for Alzheimer's disease was first published in Chad. Some of the earliest papers of air pollution's involvement Air pollution may play a role in est estimated to be up to 30% role in the formation of Alzheimer's disease. And then a more positive note, and it positive in the sense of what you can do to reduce your chance of having the disease, Chad played a major role in publishing the role of exercise and diet, the stress reduction, and, and playing a role to reduce Alzheimer's disease, maybe up to 90%. So all of these things uh, are been really important. We've also published ideas which are part of the mainstream. We don't exclude ideas um, either because they're too popular or too unpopular. We want to be a forum for this. So we published work on amyloid, tau, et cetera. But this, I, this issue of what ideas are going forward have hampered progress in Alzheimer's disease. There may have been too much emphasis on the amyloid and the pathology of the disease as being a cause. And we try to balance this by having a much broader perspective. Now, I mentioned earlier about early career publications. We don't require people, to, corresponding authors, to have PhDs or MDs, and or even those that guest edit an issue or um, or be in our editorial board, they can earn acts of service. So several of our issues have been published by uh, and organized by students or uh, doctoral students and others. 
For example, this particular year in 2020, our Alzheimer Award was awarded to a woman who um, does not have an advanced degree. And in fact, she was the sole winner and then chose to uh, share the award with her mentor, but she could have just as easily have had it herself. Okay, and then I mentioned earlier about trying to make it more involvement throughout the world, such as Latin America, where we have two uh, regional editors, one in Brazil, one in Chile. And in the Middle East, we have a, a regional editor in Israel. We're working to build a network in Africa where we know that there's emerging research and we've had African authors involved in the past. We would like to build on that. We think it's important even if it doesn't make a, a huge number of articles in the future. This is the award that was just given to Christian Nance, who is a, um, a neuropsychology technician working together with Sarah Banks. And they had an incredibly important paper about rapid cognitive decline. That's people that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and undergo um, a course to finality within a matter of less, well, a very short time period, usually less than a year. Um, our award winner the previous year, last year, was also a PhD student, and his paper was the first paper he had ever published. Our journal is highly cited, as you can see here, that every year we've increased our number of citations. These are some of the journals that cite us, and it varies a little bit from year to year. The um, impact factor is 3.9, the five-year impact factor is a little over four, and that's really reflective that we have maintained a impact factor of around four. We are the most highly cited of any journal in the Alzheimer field. And it's important to note we've published over 8,000 articles over our lifetime. Now, to create this community feeling, one aspect was to create an editorial board that can really reach out beyond the editor to solicit articles and make the decision, although I'm ultimately I'm the one responsible for quality. The, um, we've really worked on having a hub, a community hub for Alzheimer's disease. And there, and there at the website, we publish blogs, uh, which are separate from uh, the journal appear only on the website. And there's community interaction. There are places where I and other editors recommend articles for um, selection by the editor. I also recommend articles for pub, uh, public relations, uh, PR, uh, press uh, releases, as well as work with authors um, if they want to pursue press releases. We also, and the number of people that have gone to the website has increased several fold in the last few years. As you know, just within the period of 2018 to 2019, there was a tripling of the number of visitors and that's continuing. The, we've also done a lot of ranking of things, to, tools to help the field. Like we had a, an analysis of the top 100 investigators in Alzheimer's disease and set up websites for each one of them to show their most important papers. We also selected using the community to vote the 50 game-changing articles from the last 10 years. We also have letters to the editor, which are usually published at the website and not within the journal. So, in summary, Chad was launched over 20 years ago. It's had 8,000 articles. Currently, we have 24 issues published annually, plus uh, usually every year a few supplements. Each issue can be 300 to 400 pages with 30 to 35 articles. 710 articles were published in 2019. Acceptance rate is around 50%. 
and 17% are published open access. All back files are free for current subscribers. To promote uh, gold open access publishing, we have a companion journal, which is only open access um, and allows us to be more nimble in terms of publication. Um, this journal is having more and more views and more and more citations. It's currently indexed in Google Scholar, PubMed Central, and Embase. We're pending for um, a Web of Science listing. And uh, we're publishing about over 50 articles a year currently. So the journal is growing quite rapidly as open access publishing becomes more important. So I want to thank you very much for the attention you've given. Uh, to understanding the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and how important its role is in development of Alzheimer's disease as a field and something that all of us uh, want to guard for our family, the best care and treatment as we age, whether it's Alzheimer's disease or many of the other infirmities of aging. So again, I thank you for your support.